And welcome back, Game of Nation. SKS here. We're still in cross-examination time, I believe. That's what happens next, right? In the court? Yeah? Christina Mullins is a defense attorney you're facing today. Your job is to object when she gets out of line here. Here are two tricks she likes to use. Um... How do I know... Uh, I don't know. This is going to be awful. She will disguise comments as questions such as, Are we really supposed to believe this lie? This is argumentative. She will also insult your witness by calling him a low lie for criminal. This is badgering. Remember, badgering is a straight insult. Argumentative is when Mullen casts doubts on a testimony disguised as a question. So she's a deceitful bitch. Detective Benson, you testified that you saw the defendant, Chavez Trevino, shoot the victim. No, I testified that I turned around and saw Mr. Trevino with a smoking gun in his hand, about a second after I heard the shots. So you didn't actually see him do the shooting? Are we supposed to believe you're a relevant eyewitness? <laughs> yes, because <laughs> she... Objection. Badgering is a straight into always when mold cast doubt. Okay, so that's argumentative. Argumentative. Sustained. Ms. Mullins, enough with the rhetoric. Immediately after the shooting, what did Mr. Trevino look like? I don't follow you. Was he composed? Calm? He was in possession of himself. Wasn't he yelling out, my baby, you murdered her? He said that, yes. He was out of his mind with grief. He was coming apart at the seams and you didn't see it? Really? I don't believe you. He was upset. Um. Objection. Yeah, let's do it anyway. <laughs> Argumentative. Sustained. Yeah! <laughs> the defense can save the dramatic storytelling for its own witness. Is your heart so cold, <laughs> Detective? Are you such a robot that you can't see another human in distress? Hey, come on. Ease up now. Objection. Badgering. Get the fuck away. Badgering. Ms. Mullins, you are trying my patience. Either ask the detective a legitimate probative question or sit down. <laughs> Let's try this one more time. Was my client, Chavez Trevino, visibly shaken and distressed following the shooting? Yes. Did he appear rational? Calm? No. Was his behavior at that moment consistent with a person in severe emotional distress? I... Yes. So despite any forethought or planning he might have shown previously, the defendant was clearly in distress when he fired his weapon. True? True? Yes. Thank you. Damn it! That's all for this witness, Fuck Your you, Honor. Benson! You totally just shit all over my case! Why would you do that? I'm getting frustrated now. I'm on my phone. All the phones I have the same picture. Cormac, you know the gun we took off Chob Trevino? Yeah. It's a ballistics match to the one used in the preppy joggers murder. The joggers? The two kids who got killed in the park? That was in the 90s. It was 1998. Me and Lenny Briscoe caught the case, but we ran out of leads and were never able to close it. We got pulled off, actually. It burned the old man's ass pretty good. Oh, tough break. But, well, then, how did Trevino get it? Yeah, good question, detective. This case has been on my mind since I got back. Then this falls in my lap. I feel like I owe it to Lenny. Oh, God. Ray, any way I can help out, I'm in. You already Thanks. fucked up on the stand, Miss Tits. God. Now it's the defense turn to make their case. Christina Mullins is up to her old tricks. Here are two new objections for you to learn. Hearsay is a valid objection when a witness quotes someone who is not in court or cannot testify the truth of the repeated statement. No expert knowledge was when a witness testifies with no expertise to back it up. For example, testifying on medical matters with no medical expertise. <laughs> I get to be an asshole? This is great. I'm so excited about this. And remember, sometimes knowing when not to object is just as important. The correct choice may be to withdraw your objection. Mickey, in the weeks after your sister's murder, 
how did your dad act? Crazy. My dad has PTSD again. It all came back. He's, He's not a different doctor. Treatment. Objection. Mickey Trevino is not a psychiatrist, Your Honor. He's not qualified to diagnose his father. Yes. Sustained. Mr. Trevino, please limit your comments to what you saw. Tell us the behavior you observed. He, he couldn't control his temper. He, he would, like, yell when the phone rang or, like, if a dog was barking two miles away. I didn't know what to do. When Rachel was killed, I expected him to be really sad or d depressed, but not, you know, not angry. And this behavior, had you ever seen it before? No, but my sister did. Oh, she's not alive! Objection. Hearsay. Yeah! Hearsay. Regrettably, the witness's sister is deceased and can't testify to the truth of this statement. Sustained. The jury will disregard that last remark. <laughs> After he got home from the Gulf War, 1991, Pop had his troubles with the law. A felony assault charge, some other bullshit, uh, some other nonsense. Did you think he would hurt anyone? My uncle said he was getting dangerous. Uh, that's hearsay too. His uncle's Objection. not here. Hearsay. Sustained. If your uncle would like to testify, then by all means. However, you may not testify for him. Do you think your father was in his right mind when he shot Alexander Baran? No. When my sister got murdered, I tell you, it smashed something deep inside my dad. And the idea that this fat Russian bastard could walk away scot-free because of some technicality? My dad did the world a favor. Oh, man. Thank you, Mickey. No further questions. She's kind of hot, too. I wonder what the actor looks like. The jury seems convinced by your case. Yeah, they are! <laughs> Oh, it's almost my birthday. Your turn with Mickey Trevino. See if you can make him admit he knew his father had a plan to kill Alexander Baron or tried to obtain a weapon. Uh, okay. How do you and your father feel about Alexander Baron? How do we feel? Are you freaking serious? You want me to punch Easy, you? Easy, Mr. Trevino. Sorry, Judge. We Obviously, hate this whole family's got a problem. Alexander Baran is the guy who killed my little sister. My pop said he didn't care what happened to him. He said he would gladly kill Baran so we could go to hell and kill him again. Wait, whoa, whoa. He's a whoa. fat cat with an army of lawyers ready to help him weasel out of everything he does. You know this guy. Every day you read about him. Oh, he loves to do the crime, but he does not do the time. Nope, not these boys. I'm pretty sure he just said that his father... <laughs> he just... okay. Um, Did your father try to buy a gun a week before the attack? Yeah, I guess. Did you try to help sign for it? Yeah, so what? Your father was convicted of felony assault in 1992. He's not allowed to have a gun. Uh-oh. Did you know about his conviction? Nah, I, d I didn't know nothing about that. Man's got a right to defend himself. Actually, when he's a convicted felon, he doesn't. Oh. <laughs> that juror was just like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Did you ever hear your father threaten to kill Baran? Hurt? Yes. Kill? No. You just said earlier. You just said earlier. <sighs> Mickey said he hated detective. Mickey said he was hated. He said he was planned to kill. Gladly kill. There we go. That's what he said. That's not true. You just told us your father said he'd like to, quote, kill Baran and go to hell so he could kill him again. <laughs> that, was, that was like a, just a figure of speech. Or the truth. Wow. <laughs> where did he get the gun he used in court? I told the cops already. I don't know where he got the gun. You signed you for sure it. sure you didn't help him? I've never seen it before. I didn't even know he had one. You sure you didn't help him get it? You are under oath, Mr. Trevino. I... I did not help him. Pop smuggled it in under his jacket. I don't know how he made it past security, but he did. Um, no. <laughs> He's, nobody's talked about how they got the gun in, right? Benson stated the ballistics report ruled out. No one thus has proven how the gun was smuggled in. The gun was never recovered. Uh, <laughs> Benson said the gun did not match ballistic reports. Okay, we don't know how he got it in. Why didn't you get help for your dad? 
He seemed rational. So he was in control? Enough so that you weren't worried? Yeah, I wasn't worried. So where's the PTSD? I guess I didn't see it then. So maybe he didn't have it. No, That's no not way. what I meant. He did. So why didn't you get him help? Either you saw he was out of control and you did nothing, or you saw nothing. Hey, there was there was no way to know what my dad was going to do. He was crazy. PTSD doesn't How just could I possibly have known it would come to this? Happen all the time, right? I mean, it's just I mean, he said he knew his father was looking for a gun. So yeah. Yeah, we're we're roasting your whole family. He said his dad didn't have it. He said he knew his father trying to buy a gun. He said dirt bag like Baron would get to sooner or later. He said his father was on drugs now. <laughs> He already had a felony assault in his past, he tried to illegally buy a gun, and he told you he wanted Baron dead. If that was my old man, I'd have been a little worried. No shit. You want the us daddy to just your sits dad back there snap. like a statue. You say he hated Alexander Baron, knew in his heart Baron was guilty. He tried to buy a gun, but couldn't. So he found one some other way. Then he smuggled it through security, stayed cool until he had a fair shot, and fired an accurate pattern right into his intended victim. Now, Mickey, does that really sound like someone who just suddenly snapped? Yes. Objection! Withdrawn. None of this would have happened if people acted right. Rachel writes a, a nasty blog, and this guy Baran kills her. My dad's going out of his mind, and his doctor goes on frickin' vacation. Vacation, can you imagine? Let's oh, sue the vacation. Right. Everybody fails us, and we gotta suffer for it. No further questions for this witness, Your Honor. Wow, that witness just destroyed their whole case. They are just fucked at this point. I don't even know. Let's see. All right. What are we doing now? Who do we get talk to? Oh, the dad's up here. The defense is going to introduce some new tricks, so it's time to brush up on your objections and then learn a new one. You remember hearsay means the witness is repeating something third hand. And remember that no expert knowledge means a witness. Yeah, I knew that. Here's your new one. Speculation is when a witness speculates about what might have happened hypothetically. Okay, so my guess on this one is, is if the dad says the guy was going to get off, he's speculating. So, that that's that's kind of the common Mr. sense. Mr. Trevino, why did you shoot Alexander Baron? He murdered my daughter. He was going to go free. He was going to walk. Speculation. Speculation. Yep. Objection. The witness can't know whether Mr. Baron was guilty or whether he would have gone free because he stopped the trial dead. Sustained. Can you tell us about Alexander Baron's diplomatic immunity? Hey, I'm not a lawyer, but I know what that means. He just gets to skate. The law says he can run off to Russia. Oh, he's no expert. Fuck you. Objection. Bam. The witness stated he wasn't a lawyer. The diplomatic <laughs> immunity rules are actually very <laughs> complex, Your Honor. Alexander Baron's status was still under review even at the time of the trial. Sustained. Yeah. Mr. Trevino, can you take us back to 1991? And your experience after the Gulf War? Yeah, I was a ranger in Iraq. I, uh, I saw a lot of stuff. When I got back home, I had some uh, trouble settling in. What kind of trouble? I was never a violent guy before, but suddenly anything could set me off. Uh, I fought all the time. I, I couldn't sleep. My wife divorced me. I wanted to die. Well, there's nothing there I could object to. And what did the army say? The doctors said I had PTSD. They, uh, they said it interfered with my ability to regulate my emotions. So it turns so you into a woman. I joined a therapy group. I took meds for a while for the depression. Got myself back together. What might have happened if you hadn't had therapy? I don't know. Maybe gone crazy. Maybe hurt somebody. Uh, I might have snapped like I did that day in court. Oh, bullshit. Fuck you. Objection. Calls for speculation. Defense is asking the witness to relate an imaginary scenario. Sustained. Let's focus on reality, <laughs> Miss Mullins. But you got your. Why did I turn down law school? I'm you good at this stuff. You lived a normal life. So what happened recently to bring it all back? Rachel. Your daughter was tragically murdered, and the main suspect appeared to you to have diplomatic immunity. Well, she was my beautiful baby girl. He had no right. 
How could this happen in the 21st century in America? An innocent girl gets killed, the cops pin the blame on this scumbag, and still... He might walk away. As a man, as a father, I couldn't let that happen. She looked to me to protect her. All her life, I, I was a daddy, right? And I failed. And you failed. Oh. You didn't protect her when she needed it most. What use is all your legal garbage if you can't put a killer behind bars? So, as a father, it was up to me to put that wrong to right. He just admitted no to doing it. Gonna. Now my baby girl can rest with some kind of dignity. Thank you, Mr. Trevino. And sorry for your loss. She can rest knowing her Mr. dad's Cutter, in jail. Uh, defense requests a short recess, Your Honor. We wish to confer with the people about a plea deal. Well, make it quick. We're all on pins and needles. <laughs> she really sounds like she's on pins and needles. <laughs> the voice acting just gets better and better. Oh, yeah. This My is... Abby, let's not let a grieving father go to jail for the rest of his life. Can we talk deal? Depends. What are you offering, Christina? One year in county plus probation. You give us the time. He doesn't belong in jail. What? You're kidding, right? He's a killer. I got the blood stains on my jacket to prove it. Here's our counteroffer. If the scales of justice show that you performed extremely well in court, you might try for the maximum sentence of murder to 25 years. If you're less confident, however, consider a lesser charge that both you and the defense feel is appropriate. Remember, if the scales of justice don't favor you, the defense is likely to reject your offer. Uh... I mean, we destroyed this. Can I, uh... Offer murder if you feel the defendant acted in a premeditated manner and knew that he was doing at the time of the murder. I think so. Offer manslaughter if you feel that the defendant was acted out of passion or insanity. Um... I I think murder too is freaking he knew what he was doing. I feel sorry for him, but we've got to do the law. Murder two, 25 years, but with the possibility of parole at 15. If you're the good person you say you are, then it shouldn't be a problem. You got yourself a deal, Mike. Oh shit. We'll have the papers drawn up. The people have agreed to a plea and a sentence for the defendant, Your Honor. Then I thank the jury for their service. Counsel, I will see you at the sentencing hearing on Monday. Mr. Cutter, Miss Carmichael, I, I just wanted to say thank you for the deal. I know what I did was wrong, but Rachel was a beautiful person. She was smart. We could have buried you, buddy. Places. She wanted to help the world, you know, make it a better place. But this bastard... Just walked into a life and ended it all. And you walked into a courtroom and ended his life. Why can't the law protect us? From who? Alexander Baron? Or you? Oh, shit. Drop the mic. End episode. Yes. Ray, thought you'd be out having a drink. Nah, I'm going through some old files on the preppy case. Trying to tie the gun to Trevino? And coming up cold. I wish Lanny was still around. He was good at this kind of thing. Well, this ought to cheer you up. Turns out, it? Mickey Trevino is an HVAC contractor for the city. Okay. Guess where he did a midnight repair 24 hours before the Alexander Baron trial? Uh-oh. Superior Court. He snuck the gun into an air duct. Oh, shit! Shall we go have a word with him? Oh, we're going after the kid! We're going after the kid! 
Aw oh, yeah, we're gonna fuck the kid over. Wow, so the kid did help. We're gonna have to destroy him. Wow, that was exciting. I enjoyed that, gamers. Guy got 25 to life. Now that we know this, I wish we would have just put him in there for life. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed that. That was the first episode. I'll wait to see the feedback from this and see if you want me to continue on with episode two. So, uh, leave me some comments. Let me know what y'all are thinking. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll let the credits roll. And I'll see you all next time. Good night, gamers.